And now, back to the Phil Mason Show. Shut up! Shut up! Yes! Shut up! Shut up! You're telling me to shut up? Please! Just shut up! I am so sick of hearing you talking, talking, talking all the time! Don't you ever just shut up! Welcome back to the Phil Nason Show. Josh Heistis, the Stanford, or I should say former Stanford player, drafted in the first round, which was kind of dicey, to say the least, considering he was projected to be a late second round draft pick. Anyhow, he's probably going to play in the D-League for $25,000 a year. Technically, he's entitled to $750,000 a year as a rookie first round pick. And joining me to talk all about that and more from WelcomeToLoudCity.com, please welcome J.A. Sherman to the show. J.A., how you doing? Welcome to the show. Hey, Phil. It's good to be here. And uh, this is what we get when we're in the middle of the summer is, is all sorts of wonky conversations about uh, rookie-scale contracts. And in this case, about this guy, Josh Heistis, who is the Thunder's uh, 29th pick in the draft. And uh, who would have known that he would be the guy that would be making NBA history? <laughs> Who would have thought he'd even play in the NBA, to be honest with you? I would, yeah, that's kind of, yeah, I know, right? I mean, wow, it's kind of crazy. But uh, the situation is strange. And, and talking about wonky conversations, all next week, J.A., yeah. we'll be celebrating what will be my 1,000th show next Friday. That's great. 1,000 shows. I'm a nut to stay up, get up at 2 in the morning every day. <laughs> to yeah. do a show, but I love it, and, and I love having you here and all the rest of the guys, and we'll have fun with it next week, and Sherm's going to ask me a question about one of my past shows, if he wants, because we're all going right. to do some reminiscing all next week. Anyhow, this whole thing is kind of strange, <laughs> to be honest yeah. with you. Ah, everyone's talking about it, I guess, so we must, too. What? Go ahead, set this all up for me, because you were okay. going to kind of put us, put me in a scenario. All right, so so really you have to go back to the, the NBA draft. And the Thunder surprised some people with their two draft picks in the first round. The first, they took Mitch McGarry. That was a shock, but it looks like he's going to work out. Second pick at number 29, they went with this guy, Josh Heisis, who was a, a forward out of Stanford. And he had been predicted to either be a late second round pick or to not get drafted at all. So for the Thunder to reach up and grab him maybe 20-some spots earlier, and not only that, but actually slide him into the first round to make him part of the, the, the coveted first-round uh, draft picks that are guaranteed rookie contracts was really, really surprising. Because the question is, why would you pay a guy who may not even be NBA talent, why would you guarantee a contract to him? So, so the whole situation was really fishy from the beginning. But then this past week, the, uh, the local reporter, Darnell Mayberry, broke the story that actually what they were planning on doing was sending Josh Heistis to the Thunder's D-League team, the Tulsa 66ers, who uh, coincidentally are going to actually be playing in Oklahoma City going forward. So they're going to be in the same city, the, the team and their D-League team. They were actually going to send him to the D-League team in year one and then delay his rookie contract for a year. Uh, so he would not actually sign that rookie deal until like maybe a year later. And so once this, uh, this story started breaking through, it, it kind of spread like wildfire because uh, it, it looks really weird. I mean, let me ask you this. What, what would your impression be if you found out that a pre-draft deal was made where a team said, sure, we'll take you at this pick, but you have to spend a year in the D-League. What, what would your impression be of that kind of scenario? Well, I'd probably tell him to take a hike yeah. at first. On the surface, I would. Because I'm. what happens if I get hurt? Yeah, I'm only going to get twenty five grand If I'm a first-round pick, if, if I was clever, and I'm not saying that I am, I would let them think If you were, if you were. <laughs> yeah, it, here's the deal. I would probably just say, okay, I'll take the deal and draft me in the first round and then I would probably just say you know what take a hike I'll go to Europe and I'll get a million bucks a year or more playing on some whatever team and just stay there because I, I should know by now that I'm not going to play in the NBA 
very few second rounders play in the NBA. And I would have to be, I don't know, I would be honest with my talent. I would know. I mean, don't you think he knows that he wouldn't probably have gotten picked in the first round if it, yeah. that deal wasn't made? Yeah, I think so. And, and so so here, here's the funny thing is that on the surface, and this is what people's initial reaction was in social media, was that, oh, my gosh, the Thunder, they're always trying to – yeah, to, to work on the margins, to take advantage of, of players and contract situations because of this, they lost James Harden. Then there um, yeah, they're, they're are all sorts of these things that they've been doing, and then you go back to the ownership and how they got the team to begin with, and the whole thing just kind of gets painted as this really negative impression about how the team are taking advantage of this this kid, and then the impression of the kid is, well, this guy, is a, he's a graduate from Stanford. How could he be so stupid to, to acquiesce to this kind of shoehorn, strong-arm deal in, where he can't make his, his worthy wage? And yet, here, let me give you a piece of information that I didn't before. Here's the key. It was Josh Heistis' idea to do this. He was the one that presented, he and his agent were the ones to present this scenario to the Oklahoma City Thunder to say, if you draft me, I will help you out by deferring my first year by playing in the D-League, and by doing that, you get some salary cap relief because you won't have to pay me the rookie deal, but then you'll sign me on to the rookie deal after I, after I play and I start to develop and everything because I know full well that if I'm a late second-round pick, I got very few prospects going out there. But what this kid did was he actually used the system to his advantage to bump himself into the first round, get a a guaranteed contract on the table, and he got the Thunder to go along with it. And so I think it went from being a situation where it looks like the, the team is taking advantage of the kid to the kid who, yeah, he's a Stanford graduate, taking advantage of the system to make it work to his advantage. And incidentally, he said that he would only do this kind of arrangement with two teams. One is the Thunder. The other, can you guess what the other team was? Probably the Knicks. Ah, no, no, not the Knicks. No, the Spurs, man. <laughs> Those are the only two franchises that he would trust that they would honor the deal. Really? Yeah. But still, and so, you're right. Yeah. So because of that, the Thunder, the Thunder said, you know what? This can work out because, honestly, they don't, they don't have any space to play him. And they probably won't for a couple years now. But in three years, they may need a backup small forward. They may need a backup power forward or shooting guard or something like that. So they're going to do the equivalent of the uh, the, the European uh, draft and stash move, but they're actually doing it domestically. They're going to stash him in the D-League for a year uh, at his suggestion because he thought this was a good way for everybody to come out ahead. And uh, and that and that way the team gets something. He gets something out of it. He gets the potential to work inside the Thunder's system for maybe up to five years, if if the Thunder decide to pick up his two player options. Uh, he's guaranteed two years. Then there are two two there are two uh, year options at the end of his contract, and so he's got a solid five years to prove to the NBA that he belongs. And I think that's an incredibly self-aware and mature way to look about how he's going to build his career because he's probably never going to be at an all-star level. He's going to be part of the the NBA middle class. So the goal for the middle class is you stay in the league as long as you possibly can. You get as many contract extensions as you can. And he seems to be aware that this is a good way to go. And uh, and so the only real question then was, well, what do you think the NBA Players Union might think about this, where this guy is actually undermining the CBA agreement a little bit? What do you what do you think the Players Union response was? Well, they're upset about it, of course, because it takes away their leverage in negotiations for others, right? You would think so, but guess what? It's just the opposite. They <laughs> actually endorsed this move. Uh, the the agent of Heistis, uh, Mitchell Butler, he actually went to the players' union and he talked with their interim head chief and he said, you know what, this is what we're thinking of doing and that guy endorsed the movie. He said, you know what, this is actually a good thing for young guys to take control of their negotiating process. And, and perhaps it's because the NBA players' union is a little bit inert in their ability to to maintain the status quo for their players. They, they keep giving up ground in the CBA renegotiations. 
So maybe they said, you know what, if, if, you can, if you can make it work for you, you know, more power to you. And the only, the only person that I think probably gets hurt in this scenario is the guy who got bumped from the first round to the second round. And I don't know off the top of my head who is the 31st draft, draft pick, but he's, he might be the only guy who's actually bitter about this. But I actually have to applaud Heistis for taking control of his career and putting himself in the best possible scenario as a as a borderline marginal talent to actually put himself in a position where he can grow into a team organization and then hopefully succeed. And if he gets hurt, he gambled. Uh, he just made a bad bet. But he does. I mean, but that's a risk for everybody. And in, sure. in his case, and in most professional athletes' cases, they're going to take out insurance policies on their health anyway. Right. So, uh, so chances are he's going to get a hefty, hefty uh, lump sum payment if anything catastrophic happens to him. Sure, but that catastrophic thing would they'd still have the insurance policy if he'd gone to Europe and gotten a million bucks. It's a lot more than twenty five thousand. That's true, but if his goal is to play in the NBA, I, I think you have a better chance to stay inside the NBA system than to go overseas. And and with the Thunder working so closely with their D League affiliate, uh, as I mentioned, they are now in the same city, so you can literally walk across the street to to shuttle back and forth. And they do shuttle their players back and forth a lot because they want to get them as much playing time as possible. Uh, they really rely on their D League system in order to develop players in a way that they often are not able to do in, in the regular organization uh, just because their their lineup is just loaded. I mean, nobody's going to be taking minutes away from their point guard, their small forward, their power forward. Um, really, there, there are two starting positions up for grabs, probably the center and shooting guard. So, um, but, but they're loaded. I mean, it's going to be really hard for, for a rookie that is very raw and needs a lot of development to actually crack the rotation. So keep him in the D League, let him develop, let him play against guys like Durant, Westbrook in practice, and then you start to realize this is a great way to learn the game and to get better. Very clever. Very clever. But you know what? Social media, when it erupted, you know, yeah. there's not a there's actually a precedent for the Thunder doing shady things. <laughs> so yeah. I, mean, I mean that's always gonna be your first reaction with the Thunder. Issue. Yeah, that's true. It really is. But, uh, yeah, if it works out, I hope it does. But uh, to be honest with you, I, I'm not so sure. I, now, currently, there are 149 NBA players playing in the D-League or at least having some or that had played in the D-League and have experience there. That's not a bad thing, but how many of those became stars? But like well, you said, though, I mean, he's a middle-level yeah, guy. I mean, none of them are going to be, become stars. That's why they're in the D-League. What they're trying to do is earn a multi-year contract. That's how you start to build your career so you can showcase yourself over multiple years to show that you're worth an investment. It's all about picking up those checks. Yep. Yeah, but this kid shouldn't be picking up any checks. And, and that's pretty clever on his part and his agent's part. And the players' associations behind it. But there are some who think that the NBA should squash this, that it's not yep. a good idea. And, and it seems like it's in the player's favor and interest to do that, right? Yeah, and, and I think that's the thing is that the player gets what he wants, the team gets what they want, and, you know, the, I mean, it's always a, it's always kind of a crapshoot at the end of the first round anyway about what you're getting. And so they got a developmental player who's actually eager to, to be part of the learning process and uh, so he, if he can fit into the rubric, that's that's great for them. Uh, and if and if he turns out that he's not in the, in the part of the Thunder system, at least they have a chance to add value to him, so he becomes a tradable asset down the road. And uh, and they have proven that they will invest a lot in their youth, uh, as they've done with Perry Jones, Andre Robertson, uh, Reggie Jackson, uh, because that's their lifeblood. They're not going to be making free agency splash. So they have to develop their their talent organically and internally, and so this is really just another step in that uh, to developing a fully operational D League affiliate that operates as their farm system. Very clever on his part. He either makes it or doesn't. He, it's, everything is in his hands, really. Yeah, I mean, he's put himself where his outcome is determined by him and not determined by 
the organization that drafted him or you know whether or not he gets a break or something like that he he took control as best he could as a late ra- late second round draft pick and i think that's to be applauded i think that's great yeah congratulations you heisted the freaking crooks that own the thunder <laughs> you, you got to love it when the when the guy gets over well let's see what happens with his career though let's see if it actually pans out I'm not so sure. I didn't think he would even get drafted, to be honest with you. Yeah. And when he did get drafted in the first round, I was like, okay, I wonder what's up with this. Now we know. (laughs) Now we know. Great stuff today, J.A. Thanks for being on the show with me. Absolutely. That was fun. All right. That was J.A. Sherman. You can find him at welcometoloudcity.com. And that's going to wrap it up for today's Phil Nason Show. I want to thank all my guests for making this a great day of NBA basketball talk.